Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about European exploration and settlement of North America. Now we have a map that's going to help us make sense of this. It's a current map, it's a road map. It's got the states and boundaries and everything like that. Now, of course, this didn't exist several hundred years ago, but uh, when I draw on this and I show you and we talk about where people were exploring, where these countries were exploring and settling, hopefully that'll help you make sense of this in, in, in today's terms, right? Now, I think uh, for the test that if we cover the who, what, where, when, and why, that's going to help you to remember all this stuff. So who, who are we talking about? Who? We're going to talk about England, France, and Spain. Now, there were other countries that explored and, uh, well, really explored, settled, yeah, still some settled, in North America. Like the Netherlands, there was a settlement, and Sweden did some exploring. But England, France, and Spain made the biggest impact. And if you get a question on the exam, it's probably going to focus on England, France, and Spain. So that's why we're going to focus on that in this review. Right? So England, France, and Spain. So the who, the what? Well, that's exploration, some of North America. Who, what, where? Well, let me just show you. All right, I'll show you on the map. Okay, so, so England, well, that's the 13 colonies. Okay, it's kind of like this. It's on the, uh, it's on the coast, a little bit inland, but it's inside the mountains. Okay, inside the mountains here. There's the uh, mountain range, the Appalachian Mountains here, then the White Mountains, Adirondacks, kind of over here in New York, but... The Appalachian Mountains, it was on the east side of that mountain range. And I'm going to put a, a GB for Great Britain. This was the area that they did their exploring. Okay. Now, France was on the other side of the mountain range. And this mountain range will be important later on when we're talking about the French and Indian War and the causes for the American Revolution. Right? For now, know that the British colonies and eventually colonies but the explorations and then the settlements were on the east side of the mountains the french were on the other side of the mountains kind of like this great big area all right that's kind of sort of right probably a little bit more over here but uh that's the french let me put in put a big f there for france great britain and spain was here in the south okay like this, and then kind of the southwest, and down here, and that's Spain. Well, actually, it was uh, Texas this way, right? Spain here, okay? So that's the where. The who, the what, and the where, and when. When did these things happen? Well, it started... In 1492 with Columbus, there were no major expo expeditions, sorry, there were no major expeditions, no minor expeditions that we even need to know about. We're not talking about the Vikings, we go way back, Leif Erikson and that, we're not talking about that, okay? We're talking about the ones that had the biggest impact in North America. And that started with Columbus in 1492, and it went to the, kind of the late... 1600s, okay, late 1600s, so a long time, almost 200 years, over 150 years, 170 years, a long period of time that they were, that the uh, countries were exploring and settling in North America. Now, why? Why were they, these countries, Exploring and settling in North America. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of effort. What's the point of doing all of this? Well, history teachers will call it, and they have called it the three G's. All right, first one is gold. Well, that doesn't look like an L. 
Okay, am I right in there? There we go. It kind of does gold. Okay, they're trying to make trying to make money with this. Explorers were looking for wealth. Now they didn't really find any gold. Eventually, California turned up some gold, a whole lot of gold. But that was a long time after this, so they didn't find any gold. But they did make money collecting minerals, trading furs, they planted cash crops. But they were looking for actual gold, of course. And then funny. Um, What's the focus here? So Spain, looking for gold. Not a whole lot of wealth down here. Right? Yes, as you get a little further south, out of present-day United States. France, did, uh, they were focused on trading, on fur trapping and trading in here. And the British, the English, eventually, once they built the infrastructure... They uh, were planting cash crops, and uh, they were making money that way. Cash crops, indigo, sugarcane, tobacco, cotton came later on. Okay, cash crops. So that's gold. They're trying to make some money at this. And a part of this also with, uh, with gold has to do with a passage. Well, eventually the Northwest Passage, but they're trying to get, the Europeans were trying to get from Europe. See, I'm on my uh, globe here. Hopefully you can see this here in Europe. I want to point at uh, at England here, but uh, here in Europe, okay, they're trying to get to over here to China. Okay, well here it is. They're trying to get to China. Well, that's that's a long way because you have to sail all the way around. Got to sail all the way around Horn of Africa, India, and so forth, all the way to China. Took a lot of time, maybe six months, cost a lot of money, it was dangerous. There's also an overland passage, overland passage. They could go through the Mediterranean, through the Mediterranean, and then across Asia to China, and then down into India. Also really dangerous, also took a long time. So, in the late 1400s, someone had the bright idea, and then Columbus took the expedition, but someone had the idea, so let's go to the west. Let's go that way. And we'll eventually, because they knew the earth was round, that was not a question, they knew eventually they would get to China. But what they didn't know, two things, they didn't know how big the earth is, they didn't know how long it's going to take to get there, and they didn't know about North America. They didn't know that there was this giant continent in between Europe, at least if you sailed between Europe and China. You know, a lot of people know that's why Columbus called the native people. When he landed, he landed in the Dominican Republic. And down here in the islands, he called them Indians. Well, he thought he was in India. So he called them Indians. And that name stuck. So, they were looking for a water route to to China and to Asia. And actually, as an aside, I don't know if you'll be asked this on the test, I think it's interesting. This search for what became a, known as the Northwest Passage, a water route across North America, and then over to Asia, it lasted for hundreds of years. It lasted till the early 1800s. 1804, 1802, 1804, 1805, with the Lewis and Clark expedition. It was President Thomas Jefferson who sent Lewis and Clark on that. It was a military excursion across North America looking for a water passage across the continent. And one does not exist. They didn't find it. You can go a long way on rivers. Eventually, you got to pick up your boats and you got to walk. Okay? So that's gold. Three Gs. Second one is God. And then they had different approaches here with uh, this impetus, this reason for, the, uh, for their exploring. Right? So some nations, especially France, Spain, I can't say Spain and France at the same time, comes out kind of weird, especially Spain, to some degree France, not really Great Britain, not really England, but uh, really Spain, they were trying to convert native people, local people, folks who live there already, to Catholicism. Right? They're trying to convert them to Catholicism. France, yes, that did exist. There were French missionaries, 
maybe not to the same degree as the Spanish. England was not trying to, at least not institutionally, right? they didn't set up missions. Right? You're not going to find missions here. Not on any large scale, and they, we certainly don't call them missions. Um, they weren't trying to convert local people and native people to Christianity. Okay, uh, Some early folks who came here were uh, pilgrims and Puritans. They were escaping religious persecution. They weren't trying to convert native people. I mean, they, you know, attempts were made once they got there, but there wasn't a reason for the sailing over. There wasn't a reason for the settlement. Okay? So, uh, last one. Gold God and glory. Hmm. Well, at the time, a long time ago, it was thought. I don't understand it today, but people thought this way back then. That if you had a lot of settlements, that uh, it brought renown and it brought prestige to your country. So, why do it? Because it makes us look cool and tough and what's good, you know, prestigious. So let's go do this. Let's go explore and eventually settle. So settlement. Now let's think in terms of settlement. Where did they settle? Well, they settled where they explored. Now where do these settlement patterns look like? Well, we can think of it two different ways. We can think of it in terms of conversion and extraction or in terms of building infrastructure. So Spain and France, more so Spain, but to some degree France really, they were interested in conversion and extraction. So it was, Spain was trying to convert local people to Christianity. France, they were trying to extract resources. Spain was trying to too. They weren't quite as successful at finding resources here, but uh, the French were. They were very successful at finding resources through uh, fur trading and trapping. But not so much in uh, building cities. I mean, there's not a, they didn't build big cities, they built missions. The Spanish, Spanish built missions, forts and missions. Forts for soldiers and missions for, for priests, for missionaries. French built forts. Big cities didn't really focus on building big cities. Not a lot of French came. Not a lot of Spaniards came and lived over here. It's not the way it was with the English. English... Great Britain, they were building infrastructure. They were in it for the long haul. And that's why over time, lots and lots and lots of people came. Eventually a couple of million people came versus not many at all. Tens of thousands, 100,000, I mean, not very many, not compared to two million. So the population was much, much bigger over time after a couple hundred years, 150 years, 100 years. Population was much, much bigger, but that was by design. That was the goal of the settlement, to build infrastructure. And that's why it was much more successful. And uh, eventually, France was, well, they, well, they were kicked out of here eventually. And the Spaniards, well, eventually they were kicked out too, but they didn't have the infrastructure set up like the British did from the beginning. And that's a big reason, perhaps the main reason, of why... It was Great Britain's colonies going this way, right? Eventually becoming its own country, United States, and then moving forward and not France and not Spain. Um, a couple of things you might need to know for the test. First settlements. First settlement. We're not talking about the Vikings again. Right? But uh, first settlement. St. Augustine, 1565. Yeah, 1565. St. Augustine, four, oh, that's a five, not a seven. 1565 by the Spanish, first settlement. First settlement in the 13 colonies. Now, not in North America, but in the 13 colonies. That might be on the test. We don't know. It's here in Virginia. It's Jamestown, 1607. Okay, 1607, Jamestown, Virginia. And by the French, it's uh, Quebec City, 1608. All right. So first settlement in North America. Spanish. St. Augustine, Florida, 1565, first settlement in the 13 colonies. That's uh, Jamestown, Virginia, 1607. And I think that is all we need to know about exploration and settlement in North America.